Welcome to the Legally Speaking Podcast. I'm your host, Rob Hanna. Welcome back to part three of our Thriving in Law mini-series, where we aim to raise awareness around mental health and diversity and inclusion in the law. This week, I'm delighted to be joined by Alicia Collison. Alicia joined Thrive Law in 2019, having previously trained and worked at a large law firm in London. So a very big welcome, Alicia. Thanks for having me. A real pleasure to have you on the show. Um, So I guess my first question to you is, tell us about how you came to join Thrive. It's actually a really funny story. It's one of Jodie's like proudest moments in, I think, in Thrive's history. So I um uh, I qualified in London and um and basically decided I didn't I didn't want to be there anymore. The the culture and kind of I, I wasn't very well at the time and I just thought I actually just need to take a step back and leave uh, leave London. Um, but I didn't do it with a plan. So I left London and decided I was going to move up Leeds, but didn't have a law firm in mind which I wouldn't recommend to anyone. Um, but I um, I actually found um, my mum was watching Look North, so like northern, northern, local northern telly. And uh, my mum was watching Look North and um, and she was, Jodie was on the news. My mum was like, oh, there's this woman on the news. She set up a law firm. It's all about mental health. I think you'd really like it. So I sent Jodie an email just saying, like, I don't suppose you, uh, you need a solicitor any time. Uh, and I had an interview next week and that's how I got my job. So um, there were all these like very kind of formal interviews with lots of big leads firms. Then there's just Jodie and I like texting each other, just being like, yeah, it's quite, this works quite well. Um, But yeah, but I joined Thrive just because obviously I wasn't in the best place at the time. And I really needed to know that I would be somewhere that would be really supportive. But equally, I wanted to be somewhere that stands for stuff that I believe in as well. We work so much in the mental health space talking about diversity, as you kind of touched on, and, and how mental health kind of crosses over as an important facet of that. Um, and so actually, quite aside from my mum having seen Jodie on the news and all this kind of stuff, I think I would have still been a huge supporter of Thrive if I hadn't have worked in Thrive. It's a little bit like I, I work in the place that I always wanted to be. I guess in terms of um, that differential point, because you have had two different experiences, what do you think makes Thrive different? Um, I think it's I think it's the big thing is the communication piece. I think when you're part of a huge kind of firm, it's really hard to if you are having bad days or if you feel like you can't communicate on that very well, just from a mental health side, actually, it's really hard to know where to go. Whereas obviously when you're in small firms, if you know the person in charge, it's really easy to have that conversation, just be like, actually, today isn't a good day. So I'm just going to take a step back. Or I'm going to focus on marketing or I'm going to try and like not go on camera, all this kind of stuff. And it's really easy to do that. Whereas if you're in a really big structure or especially when you're a trainee and you feel like you're kind of the lowest, well, you are almost sometimes feeling like the lowest of the rung. You really don't feel like you're in a position where you can actually say, I'm not well, I don't feel like I can do this, or you don't feel like you can do it because for mental health reasons. And there are other kind of, you say that you don't feel very well, or you say that there's something else going on because you don't want to kind of open that, open that door and feel like you're letting people down for something that you're like choosing to have wrong with you. It's such a strange, strange feeling. But um, I think that's the main difference in terms of the mental health side anyway I'm obviously I'm conscious that this series is about mental health and trying to I could go on for ages about generally what it's like is between a solicitor and but that's for the mental health side anyway yeah brilliant just a little bit more context because we're going to have a lot of people who probably are in London or are in certain law firms at the moment big international law firms who may not be happy so you know what what yeah. would you say to that and and give some sort of real context around that yeah, it's it's such a difficult one, isn't it? Because especially at a junior level, but at all levels, I think there is increasingly a kind of a more a bigger realization on having those conversations. But the thing that I think is really important is trying to make sure that the stuff that is because also it's not just about the people who aren't very well; it's about the people whose job it is to support those people at the same time. And I think something that's really important is having kind of targeted initiatives. Something that I always I always remember, obviously, and I think this might ring true for a couple of other people who work at big international law firms, is that one day there was just suddenly fruit out in the kitchen. And we got this email being like, they're now giving us fruit to make sure that we're all healthier. And I remember looking at this fruit bowl and I was like, how do you know that we don't already eat fruit? And I think that's a really good example from a well-being perspective, but it's true in all cases. Like, I think law firms have a tendency to to kind of have a, or not even just law firms, but corporates have a tendency to kind of do these blanket policies or these kind of tick box exercises, which don't actually target the problems that are in hand. And obviously, when you are in a big corporate environment, the big problems are things like sleep, are things like 
overworking, stress, all those kinds of issues. And actually, if you, it's more important to have things that actually are going to help things like having, you know, sleep therapists or talking more about what is expected. So I think it's so important to kind of try and, um, to try and have things that actually fix the problems rather than just kind of, you know, a bit of tokenism there. Um, and then from an individual perspective, I think it's just always important to know that you are, even though you can feel like a cog in a machine, you are still a person and you are still kind of entitled to have your feelings and have those concerns. Ultimately, your employer has obligations to you too to make sure you're as safe and happy as you can possibly be. So, um, or at least as healthy as you can be. And so there's, there's always going to be um, a, an, an, an element to which if you are actually too unwell to do your job, you have to find someone who you can speak to. And it doesn't have to be the partner. It doesn't have to be like HR. It can be someone like an associate who you think is a friend or a senior associate who can then talk to you properly about where to move that into and what support you do need. But that's also just a really important point is, yeah, just always feel like you can talk about it. It's nothing to be ashamed of. That's a really good point to to look to to close this um, mini sode on. But is there anything else, um, Lissia, from your side in terms of your your future career? You know, now you're in this. You know, what I would call, and I think it was said in the the second mini sode, a disruptive. You know, law firm. You know, where do you see your career from from where you are today? Um, I think it's all about kind of growing with thrive and trying to I mean I'm such as I said I'm so honoured as a kind of junior member of staff to have been so kind of be there from the beginning and we get to kind of watch it I mean I don't know if you've spoken to Tom yet but we've got new partners coming on board all this kind of stuff and it's just so wonderful to kind of have a little bit like my baby or like my my niece maybe that I've kind of watched it grow and be quite a big part of its life and so I think my future is very much kind of thrive centred it's just going to be, I personally, I really want to start working more in on kind of grief in the workplace and because that's quite personal to me and kind of looking at more how we can support that and what employers should or should be doing. So I think it's just about, it's a really, I never thought I'd be in a job where I'd be able to identify something that I think needs fixing and then figure out how we should be doing that and getting the contacts to actually be like, let's have more conversations about that. So it's a huge honour for me. Yeah. We do actually have Tom coming on to conclude the, uh, the mini series. So that segues on very well but from all of us on the legally speaking podcast thanks so much and for now over and out thank you for listening to this episode of the legally speaking podcast if you enjoyed the show and want to help support us remember to leave us a rating and review on apple itunes you can also support the show and gain exclusive benefits bonus content and much more by signing up to our patreon page which is www.patreon.com forward slash legally speaking podcast. Thanks for listening.